Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Talk Tech with Tiff. In this episode, I sat down with Asaf, who is the head of design at Stackbit. We covered really what it takes to go through a product design interview really in depth. So when you leave this episode, you will not only understand the interviewing process, but some really unique tips that he shared as well. He also shared more about his journey into product design. And we ended the conversation talking about some really cool tech that we are working on. Because fun fact, Asaf and I are actually co-workers and this was the first time we met. So the conversation was really inspiring and interesting and I hope you enjoyed as well. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to my monthly newsletter. I linked it down below. It's completely free and features some really unique discount codes, uh, job postings, career advice, and more. Okay, let's dive into it. Welcome to Talk Tech with Tiff, the New York edition, where I am sitting down with industry professionals to hear about their career journeys and current roles. I created this series to hear from people who are established in the tech industry so that we can all learn what these individuals do in their day-to-day -day jobs and the type of opportunities out there. Hey everyone, we are sitting here, or I am sitting here with Asaf today. Hi Asaf. Hello. It's pretty crazy, well not crazy, but really fun fact in my opinion. This is a- With a fact? I know, we're, we're coming in hard with facts. Asaf and I have worked together for what? six, seven weeks now. We're co-workers uh, at Stackbit, and we're going to get into Stackbit more uh, later in this uh, video, but um, this is our first time meeting in person, which pandemic is pretty cool. Times. I know. Post-pandemic times. I know. Remote, yes. whatever you want to call it. Yes. Yeah. You look like, you know, the same. Do I look like my photo? Because I feel like sometimes it's you meet people. not a photo. People. We actually... Talk. Yeah, it's true on Zoom yeah. and stuff. Because I feel like sometimes you're like, you you know, you have those conversations, you're going to meet someone in person, you've just seen photos, and you're like, that photo was from many years ago. Yeah. But I, <laughs> now I feel like, you know, the, the especially like folks with good quality uh, cameras. Yeah, it's okay. We're I good. was anticipating this. Okay, okay. Yes. <sighs> maybe, maybe you're slightly taller than I expected. Really? Slightly. I usually get shorter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You got taller. Yeah, That's there one. you go. Yep. Okay, let's get into it. I, I feel like I know a bit about yourself and your background. We were just speaking about it, but um, share it again. Let's do a repeat, but, but for, for everyone listening, I know. No. All right. <laughs> um, where do I start? I think it's really interesting, uh, even from your time back in Israel, when you were talking about how you were starting at your first tech job, right. like an arrest, like all of that. Just let's go way back. Way back. <laughs> so it all began in 1990. <laughs> um, all right. Should I like should I go like school days? Whatever yeah, you want. Good. Yeah. All right, cool. Um I am someone who always thought about himself as a creative mm -hmm. but always knew that I'm not that good at it. Mm. Right? So I was like I didn't really know how to draw. I didn't really know like everyone around me that did not consider themselves as creative yeah. did better like art yeah. than me. Um I also think like I was trying to get into like the like major in art in high school. And I didn't get into that. Yeah. Um, ended up doing computers and something. Uh, so, yeah, it was like always in the back of my head, but never really, never really um, acted on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Israel. I did um, like a few years in, in the military. Um, and, you know, my head was really somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then um, tech is pretty big in Israel. And I started hearing, and this was, I'm pretty old. Like, Why not? No offense to everyone who's older than me, <laughs> um, but like this was around 20, two, 2000 and, and four, five, I'm oh, sorry, seven, seven, okay. eight. Yeah, seven, eight, where I started like looking at what is it that I'm going to do um, after I was out of the military. And my wife, who's who was an engineer back then in tech, um, started introducing to me like the fact that there's like designers designers work in in their company and i was like huh and they make money like real money um which was also something that i cared about yes um so i've learned that there are folks in companies that are actually like producing like icons and illustrations and things like that right it wasn't like considered ux or product design or mm -hmm. anything like that it was like sp strictly visual marketing um, heard about another friend that went through this like path of something that was called visual communications. Okay. And, and it was like, it was really, really, really small. Um, so yeah, that's the path that I chose. And I started like 
going uh, like I've tried going into a few schools. I ended up getting into um, a pretty awesome school in Israel. Um, I'm not going to name it because no one cares. Uh, <laughs> but I went there and I was one of the few designers that I that I know that from the very beginning was very targeted on hey, I'm going to design for tech. Okay. Like I want to see myself in a tech company. Yeah. I was curious about what that means, and and I feel like from very um, early, like this was two thousand. I started school back like two thousand and nine, eight, mm-hmm. I think nine. Um, this was pretty rare for folks to like. None of my professors ca- came from that background, right? Like no yeah. one, yeah. no one really. They all came from like old school graphic design yes. uh, backgrounds. Um, illustrators, uh, typographers, etc. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, like, they're hearing that there's, like, this shift in the industry and, and learning uh, about all these, like, different roles that um, you can focus on. Yeah. So, yeah, that yeah. was kind of, like, what I did. And I think, like, being super focused on that from the very beginning mm-hmm. kind of gave me an edge. Mm-hmm. And I feel like back, in the, back then, I could have pointed at any startup and yeah. tell them, hey, uh, oh, for sure. I can work here, for and sure. they would be like, "All right, how much?" Yeah. Um, so it was. I was. I felt very privileged to take that path. Although yeah. I remember one of my very early mentors before I even got to school was mm-hmm. like, we were doing like this um, school prep um, to get into art school. Okay. And I remember the first thing they uh, this guy told us when he entered the room was, "If anyone here is trying to actually make a career that will be profitable." Mm-hmm. Please step outside of this door now. Really? Uh, it was like no one believed because like graphic design yeah. back then it was like, you know, still almost. Kind of, yeah. It's it's still kind of um I wouldn't say um it's not average. Like average or anyway, they don't make yeah. any money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's it. You okay, so one thing you said is at that time you were like, I could point at any startup and, you know, like <laughs> get hired, get paid, whatever. And and I'm not holding you to that exactly, but but I, I feel you do you it, it was like not about me. Yeah, no. The quality. But the, like no one the role did it. itself. Yeah. 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 What about now? Do you think that's still the case now or how has that shifted? It is still the case. It's amazing. That's really awesome. Well, no, that's 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 very no. That's I know. not true. It's not true. Yeah. There are like a few thing, a few mm-hmm. boxes that you need to check. Yes. But then if you check them, mm-hmm. it's pretty true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you, and this is like an advice I will give to folks. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it was important to me because I'm quite, uh, I don't know, this is not the most artistic or a pure way to think about these things. But I always thought about my career as a career, mm-hmm. not just as like um, artistic path. Ah. And um, and it was important to me that like I work in places that people recognize. Obviously, that's the American way to do it. Yeah. Um, and that will open doors. Yeah. And then I'll be able to have that freedom to yeah. do more of the things that I want to do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, like pretty um puristic of me, yeah. like that yeah. line of thought, but like. It's worked it, so it worked. far. Yeah. It worked. It worked. Yeah. It like the, you know, the first door that opened uh, was working at IDEO. Mm-hmm. Then that opened a bunch of doors for me. Uh, then Lyft. And now I feel like with these two things on mm-hmm. my resume, it's like really. And that's like just not saying great things about Silicon Valley and mm-hmm. this industry. But really when folks see that you've worked here and there, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, like the, the There's so much. Um, I don't know about like I haven't searched for a job for a while. So. Yeah. I bet with pandemic and everything, it's been very hard for folks. So I don't want to be insensitive to that. Um, but I'm saying like when, like a few years back, the 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 like it was so saturated with with open roles, right? So yeah, like people yeah. are just like, all right, sure, you've worked come there, on. come on, yeah. uh, without really understanding like the differences in folks uh, in like the and in crafts and and uh, um, the different. I don't know. There's like, it's it's a pretty broad spectrum of what product designer yeah, means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, how would you define it? Or is that can you define it? Or is it just so very? It's so like much? how would you define an, an engineer? Right? Yeah, like, it's true. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's it depends on the company you work at, what you're focusing on. It depends on. So I feel like every obviously every product is very different. Yes. So products are different. Industries are different, right? Uh, and products are different from the nature of like. Um, 
you know, is it a consumer thing? Is it an enterprise thing? Is it uh, like what what devices is it focusing on? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, is it something that needs to be more, um, I don't know, systemic versus yeah. something more delightful? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like such a huge range of, of yeah. things um, that I feel like designers can just if if I need to think about what's like a good designer, yeah. I will say like someone who really knows and being honest with themselves about what's their strengths and what's yeah. their uh, weaknesses, yeah. or at least like know be very focused on what are the things they want to do, mm-hmm. and then get their strength to that to that place, yeah. yeah, and then find the right role for you, yeah. Because um, I can't say like you know every yeah. company really so different, yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, okay, so you IDEO, <coughs> IDEO, and then Lyft. All right. Going back Before to... Before that, a little startup. A little startup. Okay, yeah. that's my question because, uh, you know... It's not that little anymore. Hey, what? Duda. Hey, Duda. Duda. I don't know that one. They're actually a side builder. Like side, really? Stack build. Stack... What's the name of our company? <laughs> What's the name of our company? Stackbit. Stackbit. Stack <laughs> Duda is a great side builder. Love them. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was the, that was the first... Uh, that was company. the first company I worked for when I moved to the U.S. Yeah. I started US. working for them in Israel. Mm-hmm. And then I moved here um, and they were great about mm-hmm. it and offered me like to join the Palo Alto office. I yeah. worked in the Bay Area. Yeah. yeah, it was great. What is, what is and once again, I, I, I know that it varies company to company, but what is kind of across the board? Like what is a typical interview process like for, for this? Or is this like horrible? Hor- <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Interview for designers. Um, I know like the basic stuff. Um, yeah. When I, It's very different against startups versus um, IDEO, which was quite unique. Um, but in general, like mm-hmm. working, like interview process in tech will be, I would highly, highly recommend that you get a referral from someone, mm-hmm. you know, that works in a company that will connect you because it will just make everyone's life uh, easier yeah. and will probably be- uh, help you shine faster. Yeah. Um, but let's say you meet a recruiter. I think you first do, man, and s- seriously, this is probably outdated. You will do a chat with a recruiter, yeah. see that you're like a real human being yeah. and your qualifications seem reasonably like, totally uh, like a good lying. fit. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you will probably do um, a phone chat with or like a, a like a virtual interview with one of the designers on like a, a, a senior ish designer mm-hmm. um, on the team. Um, again, different companies do different uh, things like at Lyft, we would search for dedicated um, roles. Okay. So the the whole like role management was around like who is the hiring manager. So the yeah. hiring manager will probably do a first interview with with the candidate. And then um, after, like, there's, like, a portfolio review with, mm-hmm. like, the recruiters and the hiring manager, right? The, that's the first uh, filter. And then you'll get to just have a quick chat with the hiring manager, mm-hmm. see that you're, like, an inter- interesting person, maybe review one or two um, projects. Then you will do, sometimes you'll do an assignment. Okay, like yeah. Like a work yeah. assignment. Like, hey, if yeah. choose a company. Now make yeah. it better. Yeah. Right, like, assignments are the worst, in my opinion. Uh, they, they can. Be, I like them. Really? Like, I like. <sighs> I, I, I really like that part. It's like a puzzle, yeah. right? It's like it's also, it's like an opportunity to show off. True. It's yeah. a, it's an opportunity to yeah. do some bells and whistles, like yeah. it. But also, like, it's it's because it's an opportunity to show off. Sometimes people lose their like structured thinking and they lose their systemic thinking and they end up doing something really flashy. Yeah. Instead of something meaningful okay we totally which i love these are the best conversations when i don't even reference the questions good one question i'm going to reference though because i want to yes um i want to get into something that we're both really excited about and i love hearing you talk about it as well because you literally light up is um you know future trends in design but more specifically too, leading that into what we are doing at stackbit um Mm. with csi and how it's CSI. CSI. What is that? I know. Seriously, what is CSI, that? CSI. There's a show. What is there's it? A, it's, a, it's called CSI. What does it stand for on the show? I don't know. I've never watched it, but it's crime scenes investigations, I guess. Yeah, of course. I, yes. Wow. That's good. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. And then ours is content source interface. So interface, a little bit different. Yes. Yeah. Content source interface. Yeah. yeah. 
we're trying to ride the naming from yeah. an SEO perspective. So yeah. um, yeah. everyone is going to check out our SEO, uh, SEO is going to be uh, our CSI is going to be like from from LA mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to get like a role as a um, someone as a bypass or someone who got killed in the yeah. in a <laughs> crime scene. And okay, so we're talking a lot about CSI and I'm going to give <laughs> like a, a 20 second overview of CSI and then how it relates to to this conversation, but essentially what um, we're building at Stackbit, Stack, Stack Bit, sorry, the coffee's <laughs> kicking in. It's going really fast now. Um, or more specifically, our engineering team Stack has beat. built, Stack Beat, Stack Beat, has built is you can take any content source. So whether it's APIs, whether it's a uh, headless CMS uh, database and utilize uh, CSI. I haven't said it out loud too much, CSI, so I'm still getting like comfortable with that. I try to avoid it. Yeah, but you can utilize, you can then work with CSI and integrate it into to your workflow. So what this does is it allows you to um, connect to some really cool stuff. One being Figma, which our solutions engineer, Joe, uh, connected to Figma's API. And I'm going to pass it on to you from here. I'm just like putting you on the spot with it. But yeah. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, so Figma was like, I feel like an like not something that anyone had really in mind when building CSI. Yes. Uh, I've been thinking about like integration with Figma from like the first time I met um, our founders, Oad and Dan, where yeah. they introduced Stackbit to me. I was like, all right, so this is kind of like a side builder, but yeah. way more technical and yes. like everything is React based, React component. So I feel like there's something, something here. there that can uh, click at some point. Yeah. And I've tried to pitch this a few times and I feel like we didn't really feel the that it had enough substance until uh, CSI showed up and really opened up the ability to integrate with like any content source, any framework, whatever you throw at it, mm -hmm. um, we can we can integrate with it uh, at Stackbit, which is um, kind of like an, man, I'm, I'm definitely going to, say something that Simon, our CTO, is going to hate later. But it, it feels <laughs> to me like, you know, we're opening, we're creating some sort of like an open source platform I that agree. kind of like you can integrate anything to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can plug anything. So <clears throat> what does that mean for designers? Mm -hmm. So in general, designers were not our focus, really, mm -hmm. because um, unlike no code solutions, yeah. no code site builders, where the expectation is that the designers will come in into like this platform mm -hmm. and will be using the platform as their design tool right yeah. like they'll be using um like wix webflow squarespace uh this group uh, and and they will go there mm -hmm. and use whatever that platform is offering them templates specific design tools yeah. play with that um, some designers will be able to tweak more with some coding some not um, so that's one approach mm -hmm. With Stackbit, we were like, okay, we're not building a design tool. Yeah, we're building the integration and and all that, and we will enable like visual editing on top of of things. But it's like yes. it's it's gonna be like pretty rigid. Like that's how we saw the experience because we wanted this to be more focused on, um, you know, creating pages fast, but 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 realizing and understanding the fact that hey, for large project, large mm -hmm. websites, there's a large team. So and there's like dedicated developers yeah. that are going to do the heavy lifting of the mm -hmm. building um, because performance is, is important because mm -hmm. the frameworks you use are important. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the focus, right? Like we're going to give you developers everything they need mm -hmm. to build the most modern website. Yeah. Uh, but then we can not neglect content creation. So we're going to enable fast content creation yeah. on top of that. But the design part of things. Yeah. Uh, was slightly kind of like in, our, in the back of our minds, yeah. but not really a focus because we were like, okay, designers are building in Figma. Developers will develop whatever they're building yeah. from Figma on Stackbit and they will build it in a componentized way. Yeah. So we'll have, compo we, we already have like designers uh, can and content creators can just use their components, mm -hmm. um, like their, their crafted yeah. personal components that they yeah. created on Figma or on Sketch or whatever they yeah. did. And <clears throat> and then they can reutilize them really fast with like, you know, a yeah. component library. Great. And now suddenly uh, we were like, huh, actually we can 
like just Changes seamlessly everything. integrate Figma into um, our structured content, mm-hmm. um, our methodology. Yeah, um, yeah. And what happened is Joe, one of our solution engineers, um, was able to create that integration. And it was pretty, it's still pretty mind blowing. Yeah, it's still yeah. evolving. But right now what he um, kind of like unlocked is the ability for um, designers to sync their design system yeah. into um, into Stackbit, meaning let's say you have a website on Stackbit, you will usually, what you'll do is you will have your components kind of like build under um, like design system guidelines. Yeah. And your design system and your components are probably held in like a, in, in between products such as like Storybook or yes. something which is, which is all your components, all your design system implemented in code, mm-hmm. uh, right? So you're maintaining it basically on Stackbit, on on, on Figma yeah. or whatever. You're maintaining it on on a Storybook yeah. uh, in code. Yeah. And then you'll do it in like your web platform. Yes. Whatnot. Yeah. So that requires a designer constantly updating and yeah. iterating and changing a developer one developer maintaining a storybook mm-hmm. or or a similar product and then someone doing the front end and like exactly. always syncing with everything right yes. um so what we're doing now is with stackbit you're basically making changes on figma mm-hmm. and they automatically update um either on storybook or yeah. on uh, not, actually not sorry they will be updating um we're we're integrating with storybook as well so you can either sync from Storybook or from Figma or skip one of them, um, but it will automatically just update on on your website, on your live, live website. So we started with tokens, which is colors, typography, spacing, mm-hmm. all that. We're shifting into like component changes. Yeah. So, you know, you'll be able to um, easily change like the styling of like a box, a block, a button, whatever. Um, so that's already functioning, working, um, and we also have a very clear path forward for how we're going to manipulate layouts, mm-hmm. uh, create um, new components with new models. Like our mm-hmm. stack would, will be able to read um, proper content models from stack from Figma. From Figma. So yeah. in theory, and not so theory, mm-hmm. um, in I, I believe that very like soon with Stackbit, you'll be able to just define a new let's say section by dragging a few components that you already have on your component library on figma mm-hmm. and hit publish and then that section will show up in your component library on stackbit and the whole thing is synced to your um design system and it's pretty magical it is really magical that is the future i know it's it is the future it's it's unlocking mm-hmm. so much potential it's it's like um, I I was trying to explain the value of this because the majority of our team is not designers. Yeah. I was trying to explain the value that I see in this, yes. and I was like, okay, you're all developers, right? Like, mm-hmm. so imagine that you're locked into the um, code editor yeah. of like VS you know, Code or whatever. Yeah, but VS yeah. Code, but a limited VS Code. Okay. Like okay. a VS Code that sits inside like a, a no code. Um, okay. Right. Like. You have like a little window mm-hmm. that is kind of like curated according to what the platform allows. So imagine you're coding in that versus really coding on a local VS Code, right? I see what you're saying. So yes. that to me is the difference between trying to edit and tweak within Stackbit or any other visual editor yeah. versus doing the things in Figma. Yeah. In theory, I can get the same results. It will just take me 10 longer. times like slower yeah and it means for a lot more potential in mistakes along the way and it's, it's the inconsistency is inconsistency. real yeah it's real yeah, it's I a know. real thing right like you have to maintain consistency across three platforms yeah which is nuts it is nuts it's, yep. and it's not why? anymore why solved i know check i know i'm gonna link uh more information on it down below because it's for anyone which is pretty much everyone watching this interested in design or technology it's really fascinating um and uh yeah so link some resources down below also to get us off on this podcast i promised him that everyone watching had to go follow his twitter so i'm gonna link his twitter down below there's 153 right now 153 people following me right now which is I guess embarrassing. It's not embarrassing at all. It's not embarrassing I'm at all. I'm not embarrassed. No. And then by I'm the not. time this goes live, he Can wants at least a hundred thousand. Was that the 
I think 150k. I feel like you're keeping on going up. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Just Why keep not? on. Uh, Asafi, it was great having you here. Thank you so thank much. You. Um, and thank you for the coffee. Yeah, for sure. And I guess I'll see you virtually in two days back at work. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.